The medevac mission to me is, I think, one of the most honorable missions you can conduct in um, either a peacetime or a wartime army. Um, you're picking someone up on the worst day of their life and giving them hope that they're going to make it through that day. We're that beacon, you know, those guys on the ground, they don't have to worry how they're going to get back or, you know, where where they're gonna go because once we show up we just we take it from there and we bring them home. We are the like the angels the the hope that people see on the battlefield whenever their comrades get wounded or injured. Probably one of the most rewarding things that I'll ever have the opportunity to do uh, in the army. The stuff to me is a huge responsibility more than anything. I, we're trusted. We're trusted by our best friends, our brothers and sisters, that we will be there for them, regardless of the situation, regardless of where we are, what time it is, when it is, what the conditions are. That when you call that nine lineup, you're gonna see the Black Hawk with the Red Cross coming down to save you. I mean, obviously being here at Campbell at 101st, like there's just so much historical legacy. Um, you know, and with this unit in particular, just the countless campaigns. I know since I've been in the Army, you know, you always hear about 101 Cav deploying, you know, to the fight in CENTCOM, whether it's Iraq or Afghanistan and all the great things that they've done. So, you know, walking into this hangar, into this building, it's like you feel the weight of that, that history on you you know, and you want to continue that legacy. Um, so when I came here to Campbell, I was so excited to be, you know, here at the 101st and certainly um, here with, with, you know, Eagle Dust Off. I can't thank you all enough for coming out today and supporting our uh, fallen heroes and their families. Uh, it's truly an honor to be in this brigade um, and, and the way this whole team has come together in the past uh, 10 or 11 days has been truly phenomenal. You're looking at a five and a half mile route it's 9K. Each of the K markers has a memorial set up for one of our fallen soldiers. I ask that you are in silence during that time period. He, uh, he was, he was our brother. Um, we, we actually progressed together in the aircraft and, uh, I was new to medevac and uh, just learning hoist with him uh, was really fun. We had a lot of hours spent in the back of the aircraft together. We turned wrenches together every day, day in and day out. And uh, he's just a good guy, you know. If he if if he was having a, a bad day, you would honestly never know because his smile just he he lit up the entire room. Uh, that man, he he was very quiet, but he was also one of the loudest people in a room, just from his personality alone. He had a bubbly, infectious personality, uh, kind-hearted person, great worker, one of the best workers we have here. Almost the first day he came over to the company, he was talking to me about how, you know, his goals and, and what he wanted in the Army, and he had been working on a flight school packet, and um, we sort of had to pick up the ball from where he had it in his previous company, and 
kind of run with it and help them out with getting letters of recommendation and stuff like that. Um, and you know, we were able to help him a lot with getting that packet together. And you know, we, he had just found out uh, a week and a half ago that he had gotten into flight school. Um, when I heard the news, I called him right away. And I wasn't his platoon leader anymore by that point, but I still kind of thought of him as one of my guys. And I called him and I just told him that I was proud of him and that I knew that he was going to do a great job. And I just remember on the phone, he was like, oh, thank you, sir. Thank you. I'm so happy. Um, and I know that if things had turned out differently, that he would have really turned out to be a fantastic pilot. And it's a huge loss that, that we don't get to have him on board. Sora Bolaños, uh, wow, what a firecracker. She was always making food, you know, always feeding people here at the hangar. She was really proud of her culture, and uh, we really embraced that. We really looked forward to that. Sergeant Bolaños and I both have a, uh, a love for learning more about our family's heritage, and she brought that to work. She had that in her cooking, and I, I love that about her. Like, sh she believed in that. She believed in America, and I'm going to miss that about her every day like yeah she, she loved she loved her family she loved what she was doing very positive individual uh, very impactful um, and she is she's just that she's that person if you're having a bad day you could come in and she'd be talking about some food she made or how she uh, she was making spam musubi for someone um, so she's just uh, she's an awesome individual when I first got to the unit was PFC Bolaños and I was assigned to second platoon to be the new section leader. That platoon was coming out of Latvia together and came back to Germany where I joined them. And they all knew each other really well. They were really tight. They just spent a lot of time in the field together. And I was sort of the new guy. But Emily was always just so kind. You know, she immediately even though I was an officer and she's a PFC, she still went out of her way to make sure that I felt welcome and I felt like a member of the platoon, which really meant a lot to me. My, uh, my man, Salinas, he was from day one an absolute goofball. He, uh, <laughs> he was all, all about it though. From the second he got here until, you know, the the last night I saw him before he went out to fly, he uh, he wanted to be here and he wanted he wanted to fly. Yeah. Salinas couldn't fit through a doorway. <laughs> um, he always had to turn sideways, even though he didn't. And I love that. I didn't get a lot of time with him because he was so new, but. From the second he was here, he was someone that we knew was going to be a really big player for the medics. He was always first one to say, yes, I want to train. Yes, I want to be a better medic. Just tell me what to do. He was the first one to volunteer for a flight I needed covered. Even though he wasn't R01, he couldn't do it. I always appreciated that. Uh, it was funny always having to say, like, are you done progressing? He's like, well, no. It's like, and he just was always there for anyone. He really wanted to be R01. He wanted to finish his progression, and that was his flight that night to get it. And um, he got it. He just needed that point two. He got it. It's just. It's just there's not going to be a lot of things we can do to fill in what he did for us. We're going to we're going to think about him every day. And uh, we, we all loved him. Every single person in first platoon and uh, every single person that met him.
Sergeant Gore, my COIC. Air assault. <laughs> um, he was so happy all the time as well. Uh, when he took over my, as my NCOIC, man, that guy works hard. Like, I can't even explain. He, he was so passionate about the 101st Airborne Division. Like, every conversation me and him had, he would always end it with a loud and thunderous air assault. Gore was someone who, the second you met them, you felt like family. He was kind, he was funny, he lit up a room. He never came in without a smile. And he was really good at finding the thing that bothered you. For me, it was the, just the whole air assault thing, and he knew it always got me, so he'd always make sure to throw that in there. Sergeant Gore, uh, Caleb, we, we were uh, medics together back at Carson. So I knew, knew Gore um, for, you know, for since 2017, uh, I've known Gore. And he was the exact same person then as he was now just gregarious and funny and, and loved to have a good time. I'll never forget just the passion that he had for what we do and the passion he had for medicine. Uh, he was gonna go to nursing school or PA school, whatever he could do to be better, he was gonna do that. And it was really inspiring because I think it's something that we all have goals to do, but he was just making it happen so fast and I always just loved that I could count on him to bring things back to normal, or not to normal, but in a perspective. Gore is a, Gore Superman. That's what he is. One of the strongest NCOs that I've ever had the pleasure of working with and one of the best dudes all around. Just a great guy, Taylor Mitchell. Um, passionate passionate about the medevac mission. Um, his passion was to train the people around him to possibly have the chance to save a life one day because he knew the privilege that comes along with saving a life. Just hearing like my friends uh, at other dust off units or anything that knew him, he was exactly what you think of when you hear a flight medic. He was smart, he was athletic, he was amazing as a person in general. He was selfless and he just had so much knowledge that you couldn't even, you couldn't understand. Like you, just, you couldn't understand how someone could know so much and actually be able to keep it together. Training with him, you felt like you were in rare air. Um, and it's a shame that uh, <laughs> I'll never get to see all his camping trinkets again and learn how to um, better my field craft and just uh, spend time with just a great guy. He just was comfort. And he was the person that everyone here relied on to know what to do. And you don't, you don't have a lot of those people like that. I think that a lot of us are so new that we're still learning. And he was kind of that like old man in a young man's body kind of wisdom. We wanted to sell the brand. He was dust off through and through. Um, If I could put anybody on a poster uh, for dust off, it would have been Taylor Mitchell. Being around Jeff, I, it was very evident how selfless of a person he was. Um, more often than not, when I think about Jeff, he was asking me what I needed if there was anything that he could help me with um, rather than the other way around. Every single time, without fail, every single time I left the office, Jeff Barnes asked me what he could do to help. And there's just not very many people that do that. Um, I don't care what organization you work for. Um, and, you know, I got my um, 
always pregnant. I got my um, little girls on the way and Jeff and Aaron um, both pulled me aside multiple times and just gave me so many kernels of wisdom about how to be a good dad, um, how to be a good dad in the army. Um, and just, I think the biggest takeaway I had from both of them was that you got to enjoy every single second as it comes. And um, I think especially Jeff uh, taught me that more than anything. Um, and I'm so grateful for that. I know that Jeff had gone through some difficult things before coming here. And I think that experience could have caused him to like harden or be pessimistic or cynical or negative uh, in his life, but he wasn't. Like he was this guy that had this huge heart for other people. Um, and I think that was the other thing that drew me to him was he's this guy that would give his shirt off his back for anybody. Um, and whether it was at work or outside of work, like he, he was the same. He was just super genuine. Knowing him such a short time uh, is hard, it's difficult, um, but I, I still am like really grateful for, for the chance to get to know someone like him. Uh, just a, a phenomenal human being through and through. Aaron was new, newer to our platoon, but I already could tell He'd, he'd accomplished great things in the Army and was going to. Um, he was, a, I mean, we only had one field exercise, but he was the first one up every morning when I was on uh, night guard. And we just sat. We talk every morning, just about life. And how eager he was and loved what he did. Aaron Healy, I mean, he, he, you know, he came to the platoon like a couple months ago and immediately, you know, I knew that he was one of the good ones, you know. After flying for a while, uh, you can kind of get a feel for when pilots are going to make pilot and command fast, when pilots are going to get things fast, understand the mission fast, the business, get it. Uh, Aaron Haley was, Aaron was absolutely one of those people. Jeff and Aaron, um were my buddies. Um, you know, you get, as the W1, I've been here for a year, and uh, you get, and you hear new W1s are coming in and you're just, you're excited because you get a hand off the fridge, right? Um, which I think any of the warrants can understand. Um, but what I got in them was something much greater. Um, Jeff and Aaron were both professional hard-charging, hard-nosed NCOs that took that into being aviators. Um, and I think more so than that, especially Aaron, um, just kicked all of our butts in the books, man. He was, he was really sharp. Rustin Smith. Um and I first got to the company. He was the first instructor pilot I spoke to. He did my entire progression. Um, and I, I think pilots, sometimes you'll just feel a connection with someone in the cockpit. And Rustin was that person for me. Being his platoon leader and everything he already had on his plate, he still checked in on our guys. He checked in with me, made sure that we as a platoon had what we needed to succeed. And then he would go and do stand stuff, progressions, flights, night flights, everything. He just was on top of it all. And it was impressive, very impressive. 
Rustin <laughs> was the pilot that I always was excited to fly with. He was the person that was always going to do things the right way and I just always knew that like he would do anything he could to keep us safe. I think as a pilot, Rustin just had a way about him that was comforting. Um, some of my hardest flights were with him, just on a personal level. Um, flights that I was experiencing new things outside my comfort zone and Rustin was just um, I trusted him <laughs> with everything. Even after I finished progression I would just bug him and be like, get on this flight with me, you know, like comply with me, comply with me. And um, that week, that was one that I was, I put him on the flight schedule. It was like, you know, Smith and Hemel for this AMR for fifth group. And um, last minute, he was, I don't know, he was super dedicated to his job. That's, that's all there is to it. And he was like, no, I've got to finish this progression on Barnes and Healy, you know, as much as I want to do the fun flying, uh, I've got, got to do this flight. And I was like, I understand that, you know. And um, so we went out that night. And um, that same night that they were flying, we were flying. And um, they obviously didn't make it back. And uh, we did. And um, came back, landed the aircraft. Everyone was obviously very emotional. And they didn't, it didn't process for me yet, I think. So just treated it like a normal flight, you know, and put all the flyaway gear, tied up the aircraft, grabbed all the SI, went to flight ops, like very normal, it was totally fine. Um, and then I went to put my flight gear away and his wasn't in the locker. And I knew his, his was never gonna be in the locker anymore. Um. He, he was about to PCS down a Rucker to be an instructor pilot there. I had four weeks left here. It was, um, he was going to touch so many kids down at flight school. I, I feel like flight school taught me all the basics, you know? Uh, Rustin taught me how to fly. That's all there is to it. Zach Sparza. <laughs> I'm sure everyone's going to talk about him, just his personality, and always smiling, always excited. For me, the thing that stood out, again, like we talked about before, the passion and love of Medivac, and checking in on all of us. I mean, almost daily, weekly, he'd come in, just got checking on my Juliet's. Um, the amount he cared was just immense. <sighs> Zach was my platoon's IP, so um, we've spent a lot of time together, a lot of time together in the cockpit, and I, you know, I, he's was such a character, and just uh, really in a lot of ways a larger in life person um, that loved to have fun, loved to joke around, loved being a pilot, um, but also took his job very seriously. Um, and I learned so much from him um, when I was cutting my teeth here about how to be an aviator, what to look for, what to be focused on. Um, but he definitely grew in me, you know, love for aviation and a love for doing what we do. Um, and I, 
that'll be something that I'll never forget and that I'll take with me always um, as we as I leave here, as I go to whatever unit. Um, Zach's love for aviation and Zach's love for teaching is something that I hope that I can carry on and, and do my best to um, share with the Army aviation community writ large because it'll be a better place for it. He was um, one of the closest people in the company I was probably with. When I think aviation or um, all things medevac, like, Zach embodied medevac. Um, if he wasn't talking about medevac, he was talking about his private plane. Um, he was all things aviation. Um, but you know, even if we weren't flying or even if we're in the field environment, he was always, hey, coming up to me and he was you know, at the platoon level and he would say, hey, I, wanna, I wanna get a class together. I wanna sit down, I wanna bring people in, I wanna teach them this or teach them that. Um, and he was always one step ahead. I was thinking about him this morning, you know, and like he had really just lived life like to the fullest. Um, when he was at work, he was 100% at work and just poured himself into this job. Every time I've had flown with him in the cockpit, he, uh, it was no matter what kind of flight or what was happening in the day, um, despite, you know, the stress of work going on or um, the tasks at hand, he would just look at me and he would hold out his fist and he would just be, you know, waiting for a fist bump. And so I just remember the first time he did it, I was like, oh, this is, you know, is kind of cool. Um, and he would, he would look at me and say, you know, like, hey, it's a, it's a good day. We're going to fly today. So. Um. And so I, um, yeah, he was a, a really big like mentor for me and uh, wanted to be on top of my game whenever I flew with him. Um, you know, always be prepared and because I wanted to I wanted to rise to that bar that I felt like he had set for me. Um, and so moving forward, um, I don't think there'll ever be a flight where I don't think about him. I want to do well for him. People on those crews were just some of the best, best attitudes, best personalities, and loved what they did. I think the hardest thing about what's happened is that, for the most part, these were the people that made me feel safe. And I just, I'll miss them my entire life. It's just a, a difficult time, you know, right now uh, for us. And, uh, but we're here as a family, you know, and we just move forward as a family. Yeah, man miss the hell out of them, but I, uh, the other day they came and started up all our aircraft for the first time to do 14 days, and even just hearing the rotors turn, uh, 
think brought to the entire company like just the best feeling. You would think after an accident like this, you know, the last thing you would want to do is get back into the cockpit, like climb back, you know, and start being around the aircraft. And it's, it goes back to that responsibility piece I was talking about earlier. That's all we want to do right now. Because um, as tragic as this is, the mission doesn't stop. It doesn't. It's, we, I wish, I wish more than anything, I could have done something to save them that night. You know, because we talk about medevac and we talk about saving lives. What we don't talk about is the lives we're not able to save. Um, and that's hard. It's really hard, especially when everyone knows them. You're part, they're part of your team. Um, but earlier somebody said, you know, that what is, what is medevac? <laughs> what is dust off? It's like you are that angel. Um, and they're all nine of them. I guarantee you, every time we go up, they're with all of us. As like cliche as that sounds. Um, yeah, we, we lost some really great people.